Hey guys, thanks for joining us. I'm joined today by the Wizard King, Orin Vai. How are you doing, man? I'm doing fantastic. How about yourself? I'm good, man. I'm good. It's uh, We've had some nice weather here in the UK today, so I'm guessing that's probably it for the rest of the year. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's been all right, man. It's been all right, but it, it's a pleasure to get you on, dude. Honestly, it's uh, a big fan of your work, so I'm, I'm so happy you've come on, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad I could... We could make it work and I could get on. Yeah, man. No, I said, you know, we, we, we make these things happen. You know, we uh, real life gets in the way. You know, I said, the week, I work in the hospital, so I know exactly how uh, difficult real life is at the moment. But uh, yeah. it's uh, it's something else, man. But yeah, dude, I, I tell you what, I'll start straight away because I woke up early for it for GCW Fight Forever. Um, and the first thing that came on was you walking out. Um, so I was like, this is the perfect start, Orange coming out, I'm fine, this is great. I mean, let's start with that, I mean, what was it like working, you know, Fight Forever? I mean, what time did you actually, I think it was half past seven in the morning for me. So, I mean, what time would that have been for you? It, it was midnight, a, a little past midnight for us. Yeah. Um, yeah, because because things got, I think they, they lost power at some point, so we got pushed back further and further. Yeah, man, I was just, yeah, and was it, as, I mean, we spoke to Billy Starks, and she said it was freezing, I mean, was it as oh cold? Oh, my God, it was so cold. <laughs> they, the the building that they ran in uh, didn't have heat, so we, wow. were, we were working with no heat in the middle of winter, even <laughs> though it's a giant building, you know, full of people, it was freezing cold, it was so cold. My God, how did you think the show went, though, dude, I mean, I, I as a wrestling fan, I, I loved it, I mean... A great concept, a 24-hour show as well. I mean, what was it like being a part of it? Uh, it was, for me, it was nice because I had been away from GCW for mm. over a year. Um, and, and to finally be able to come back into a GCW ring and do what I do best in death matches with, you know, one of the best in the world in Schlack, uh, that, yeah. that to me felt good. And then to deliver in the way that I feel like we did, um, it was, it was really vindicating for me to be able to come back and show out like that. And, you know, see a lot of people across the board say, you know, that was the best match of the 24 hours. That was, yeah. you know, that was the one that had people the most engaged. We did everything, um, within the confines of, you know, a true, true time limit because you're working within, you know, you have 24 hours scheduled out. Yeah. So you know, you're working within an actual time limit as opposed to a show where you can say, screw it, I'm going to go over on my time, you know? Yeah. And um, you, did, um, you did double duty as well, didn't you? I mean, you were there. I, I did. As well? Yeah, I, I did no piece uh, a couple hours later against Matthew Justice uh, in a in pretty rough shape. Uh, it probably would have been easier had, you know, had it been like right away after. Yeah. But by the by the time it came around, I the adrenaline was gone. Now I was just in pain, feeling everything from the slack match, and it was cold. And I'm like, oh man, I'm trying to keep my bicep together because I had a giant hole in my bicep, so I'm trying to keep that together. I couldn't see because slack pulled one of my contacts out while we were while we were working. So I, I was blind, cold, in pain. You know, no piece has always been so good to me. Yeah. So I was like, I, I'm, I'm not gonna not do this match, and it was fun. We had a blast. It was something different. Uh, but yeah, I, I did double duty, and it was the, the whole event was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and you know, I was able to see a lot of my friends that I hadn't seen in so long, and you know, to be able to catch up and, and all come together for, for professional wrestling was really cool. Yeah, that's it. I mean, I, I spoke to Kevin Gill the other week, and I said to Kevin, it's. The, the show itself made me realize why I love pro wrestling. You know, the, the reasons behind it, the show, everything about it. You know, I sat there for I mean, at least 18 hours. I mean, you know, the UK time, we slept for right. something. But about 18 <laughs> hours of it I watched, and I was just in awe. It's, it was a goosebump moment because I love pro wrestling, and it was things like that that make you realize why you love pro wrestling. Oh, yeah. You know, oh, yeah. And, and, and that, that was the... That was the, the cool thing for me was to, you know, we know that there's eyes on this. We know that this is, you know, going to be highly watched. So Schlack and I were like, 
let's go out and show what deathmatch wrestling truly is. Yeah. Let's let's take away any stigma, any questions, any, you know, preconceived notions of what deathmatch wrestlers are and what deathmatch wrestling is. And we went out there and I think we hit a grand slam on that. We did yeah. we did technical wrestling, high flying, brawling, you know, we did everything and I felt I was really proud to be able mm-hmm. to be on that platform celebrating pro wrestling and I think doing deathmatch wrestling justice. Yeah. Yeah. We spoke to um, John Wayne Murdoch and Casanova Valentine uh, the other week. And we said the same to them. Deathmatch wrestling lately has got a very positive name to it. And rightfully so. It's, it's been portrayed by guys like yourself and those guys. Your storytelling you're not just going out there and beating the shit out of each other for the sake of it. You're telling a story. I mean, have you, have you noticed that yourself? That Deathmatch is getting a, a, a big, big name for itself again at the moment? Yeah, and, and I think a lot of that is because of, you know, those of us that are around now. You know, you have guys like G. Raver and Alex Cologne and Shaq. Yeah. And, you know, we're all out there. We take it, you know, personally because we take so much pride in what we do that we want to go out there and change any thoughts, any notions that people have about deathmatch wrestling. So we can show it to anybody and have them be like, Oh, this is still wrestling. This is, you know, there's because the, the guy I used to live with who has been a lifelong wrestling fan, you know, was a fan in the eighties fan in the nineties, you know, a a hard, hard sell. He, now he loves it. And he's like, I, the the possibilities for storytelling in deathmatch wrestling are so exponentially large that like if if you do it right and you do it well it's such a beautiful thing yeah and and i think all of us now are are looking at every match that we do as just that as a chance yeah. to show that you know this is storytelling this is wrestling this is more than just hack and slash people that can't wrestle so they did this instead yeah that's it, yeah, no, when we spoke to John Wayne Murdoch, he pretty much said the same thing, you know, he's he's going out there and he's getting to tell a story and he's feeling and seeing that fan reaction that these guys are appreciating this. And and I'm the same, I know Callum, who I do uh, ringside as with, was never a big Deathmatch fan and this past year or two, he's fallen in love with Deathmatch wrestling as well because it's been done the right way. And that, that's a testament to you guys. Um, but I mean... What got you into Deathmatch, though? I mean, obviously, I've done a bit of research, and you got into wrestling, obviously, you, you was an Eddie Guerrero, Angle kind of fan. I mean, when did the Deathmatch start to sort of pique your interest? So my my original, like, falling in love with wrestling was, like, Eddie and Kurt and those guys, you know, the, the Brian Kendricks, the Paul Londons. But I got my hands on a DVD when I was a kid. It was, like, ECW's Bloodiest Matches, and it had yeah. Born to be Wired on there. And I think I bought that DVD somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it had Born to Be Wired on it, and I was hooked. I don't know what it was about seeing Sabu slice open his bicep and keep yeah. going. I was like, this is it. This is like, that's what I want to do, which is absolutely asinine to think. But yeah. that was like, that for me was if I get into wrestling, I want to do this. My trainer was like, absolutely not. You will never do that. That is not what I'm training you to do. And, you know, now, now when I talk to him, he's like, well, clearly it's working out for you. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, it was born to be wired. And then, you know, being a growing up in Minnesota, you have guys like Nick Mondo around. So, yeah. you know, you're, you're looking up to guys like that and you have the standard of, of what you should be and, and, you know, the, the level to which you should perform at. So yeah, it was, it was really the born to be wired match was, the the ripped open bicep. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. That's what I want to do. Like an idiot. Yeah. I remember that dude. Yeah, and seeing him tape it up and carry yep. on. Yeah, man. Yeah, absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. But I mean, do you still enjoy having, like, obviously the normal wrestling matches still as well? I mean, is that something you still enjoy doing? Yeah. Um. I. You know, obviously, like becoming a a big name deathmatch guy, mm-hmm. you don't get a chance to do that a lot. But um. I moved out to Colorado at the end of last year. That's where my wife and I live. And uh, there's a there's a company here called Rocky Mountain Pro. Yeah, uh, yeah. I've been I've I've been there uh, almost every day of the week, working with the kids, training with the kids. Um, and now I'm doing shows for them. Just normal 
basic yeah. wrestling that I used to do when I started, and I'm having a blast. It's so much fun to like be able to flex those muscles and, and do that stuff too, which I haven't been able to do in a long time. Yeah, that's it, dude. It's the love of wrestling, so it's still always there, no matter what part of it you're doing, you enjoy doing it. Yeah, and and I've actually gotten back, like being back in the in the academy, working with the kids. I've gotten back into watching wrestling, and yeah. I've spent so many hours in the last month or so watching so many Zack Saber Jr. matches. It's unreal because yeah. I've always loved Zack Saber Jr. But now I'm like, well, if I have this platform to do normal wrestling, I can actually work on that style of wrestling that I've always wanted to do. So. The amount of Zack Sabre Jr. matches I've watched, and like, be ready to see those in my death matches. <laughs> oh man, hey, I'm ready for that, dude. I think you've just made me realize how much I want to see that match you versus Zack Sabre Jr. I mean, that'd be a that would be that's, an insane match. That that's the dream. That is like, if if you ask me who the dream opponent is, mm. that's the guy because he's so he's so good in every yeah. way. And like when when you get into the business, you get pretty jaded in terms yeah. of like really being a fan and really being able to like stay invested in matches. I watch Zack Sabre Jr. matches and I sit on the edge of my seat when he's trying to fight and bring him yeah. and stop him from getting to the ropes. Just seeing the way his mind works, it's that gets me excited again. Yeah, I, he's he's on a whole nother level. I mean, we I had the, one of the last shows we had him in the UK before the pandemic, um, Zack Sabre Jr. was on it. I think it was him versus Will Ospreay in the main event. And it was just a clinic. It was an absolute clinic watching the guy. It really was. Um, and he's a look. I got to meet him after the show as well. And he's such a nice guy. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I didn't realize until today, speaking to you, how much I now want to see you versus Zack Sabre Jr. That's uh, one day. I'm that's, really hoping. That's a dream match, dude. But I mean, speaking of Japan, you did wrestle in Japan uh, yes. as well. I mean, what was that experience like? Man, that that was life changing. Yeah. Um, get, getting to go with with GCW with my you know the people that I consider my family. Yeah. Um, you know, being able to share that moment with a guy like Danny Havoc, you know, who's obviously yeah. no longer with us, and getting to share that that moment with him with Matt Tremont, you mm -hmm. know, being over there with guys like that was was really special to me. Being able to main event the first you know the very first night, yeah. even though it didn't go the way you know you hoped it would go. But like being being told that you're good enough to be one of the select few that go over to Japan and represent our company on Japanese soil was was a huge honor to me. Yeah. And I took it very seriously. And it it changed my life. There's if if I could move to Japan, I would. Yeah. And you know, that that's definitely in in my mind of, you know, the next five years. If I could because the fans there are incredible. They they all, yeah. you're treated like you're treated with such respect and such honor, and you know they they truly appreciate what you're doing for them. As opposed to you know some American fans will get mad because a guy didn't bleed as much or they didn't do this or they yeah. didn't do that. You know, Japanese fans are just appreciative. They love the fact that you're going out there and taking any amount of risk for yeah. them at all. Yeah. Oh yeah, they are. They're so respectful. You see them in the crowd when you're watching it. It's just so respectful I, to I totally get that as well i really do um but we speak to a lot of people and they always say the same thing japan's their goal um so that's i guess the case with you as well it but was you yeah <laughs> when you went over there as well i mean you got to wrestle at karakan hall i mean what was yeah. that that must have been special man that that was surreal being able to look out at that crowd and see all those people and go oh my god i'm wrestling in a legendary venue yeah that's hold that's held some of the great matches of all time and i get to be here with schlack in a match that's like authentic japanese style mm -hmm. and it was it was so much fun and it was so cool to be able to look out and see the sea of people yeah because we it was pretty full and then you know that was one of those times where you know, I had kind of started to lose my love for wrestling. Mm. And then I watched uh, Segura and Miyamoto absolutely yeah. have an incredible match. And all of us Americans were sitting there on the sideline watching and like kids in a candy store. It was so good. And the crowd was amazing. And I was like, this is why I love deathmatch wrestling. This is why I love wrestling is this moment right here. Yeah. 
that's it to it. And in such a historical place as well. I mean, it's, yeah. I guess it's almost like wrestling in Madison Square Garden in the States. Yep. You know, it, it's the same. I mean, it's it's a goal of mine to go just to in that arena. You know, maybe go to a Wrestle Kingdom or something, but to actually wrestle in it must have been so yeah. incredible for you, man. It, it was. It was. It was definitely something where... And, you know, how many Americans get to say, you know, how many American independent wrestlers can say, exactly. I've wrestled in Kirk and Hall? Yeah. Yeah. It's insane, man. But I know you mentioned Tremont as well, because um, we spoke to a few people and they all say the same thing that he's uh, maybe the godfather of deathmatch wrestling. I mean, what's it like being working with Tremont? And, and uh, did you learn a lot from him? Man, I, I had the honor of working with Matt three times, and I don't I don't know if it's changed, but at the time, I was the only person to ever beat him three different times. Wow. Um, Matt is single-handedly responsible for me still being in wrestling. Yeah. Um, the, the second Insane 8 that I, that I won, mm-hmm. um, I went into that show thinking, this is it. I, yeah. I've done a lot. You know, I, I feel good about where I am and I was, I was going to call it. And, you know, I was, I was like, I, I feel good about what I've done in my career. I can, I can call it a career, call it early, focus on a family, focus yeah. on that stuff. And I had, we get to the finals, it's Matt Tremont and I, and we're standing there and that crowd is deafening in that little tiny shitty dive bar. Yeah. There's 200 people packed in there like fucking sardines and it is deafening and matt and i just get to stand there for five minutes hearing the crowd not stop for a second and we we get through the the finals matt you know gets on the microphone as only matt can do and he he talks about you know me and the future that i have in this business and i was like nope i this is this is my life this is I'm not going anywhere. I'm not leaving anytime soon. Like I went into it ready to retire. And after that, I was like, I don't think I'll ever retire. Uh, <laughs> you know, cause, cause Matt, Matt said, you know, so many things. And just that moment was so special that I was like, yep, this, this is, this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. Yeah. I mean, we spoke to Casanova Valentine last week and he said pretty much the same thing. Matt Tremont helped him so much. You know, he, he went to show of him when he was a, a nobody and Matt Tremont put him over. He said, you didn't have yep. to do that. So that's the kind of guy he is. And people don't realize as well how good he is in the ring. Oh you know, God. he's so good. And it, he he is the, he's like the standard bearer of what you want to be and who you mm. want to be. He's done nobody wrong. Yeah. He's he, like when people, when people bring up Matt Tremont's name, people only have good things to say. Yeah. He's unselfish. He wants to see the young generation succeed. He wants to give back. He truly loves wrestling and he truly yeah. loves everything about it. And he's one of those people that you never hear a bad thing about. He's like the, the Eric Cannons of the world. When you bring up his name, everybody's like, Oh my God, I fucking love Eric. Cannon. He's, yeah. this guy, that guy's great. You know, when, when you have people like that, that you get to be around and you get to work for, you get to spend time with, it only makes you better and it makes you truly love wrestling and see it in a different way. Yeah. And he's doing great stuff as well, obviously, with H2O now as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Running that company. But he's, yeah, I, I've always been a big fan. It's always nice to listen to people like Wet to people say, you know, how good he is and the things he does for them. I mean, you're just another one of the list of people we've spoken to that yeah. cannot speak highly enough of Matt. Um, Another guy we spoke to, and I know you had a, a 60 minute death match with John Wayne Murdoch. I mean, we spoke to John the other week again, and I have to ask you about that match. Dude. I mean, one, how, how do you approach a 60 minute match anyway? I mean, do, do, do you approach that differently to any normal match? Uh, I think with anybody else, I would have approached it differently, yeah. but I knew with John, it was going to be balls to the wall for 60 minutes. Yeah. And. And because it was a first time ever match, you know, first time we're truly making history, which in wrestling anymore is hard to do. It's hard yeah. to do something that hasn't already been done. Mm-hmm. Um, so going into this, I, I knew that we had to do something special. We had to deliver it in the highest level. Um, I'm really proud of that match. I think we went into it knowing that it had to be all gas and yeah. I, I think one of my 
my favorite compliments I got on the match was from, you know, the referee, Chris Levin. Yeah. Uh, he, he said that he's like, normally when you see people emoting or speaking or talking during a match, it's really convoluted. It's really, yeah. you know, it doesn't come off as, as genuine. He's like, I was feeling the stuff you were saying. I was feeling the emotions you had in that match. Mm-hmm. Because to me, it's something that I've really been, you know, struggling with internally is the the feeling of being forgotten, the feeling of being left out, the, you know, when when I feel like I haven't been prioritized, yeah. even though I've done so much in deathmatch wrestling, I, I feel like I, you know, I'll get benched first. And that to me was a moment where John's been doing this forever. John is, mm-hmm. you know, a, a legend in deathmatch wrestling because he's been doing it forever at yeah. such a high level. And I was like, everybody will always remember John. This is my chance to be remembered. And you know, that was kind of the story of that was, this is my chance to create a memory. This is my chance to be, you know, written down in history forever. And I, I really, I really think I was able to do that in, in that match. And John and I were able to put on something that people watch and are like, wow, I was invested for 60 plus yeah. straight minutes. Yeah. And, and, and we spoke to him. He spoke very highly of you as well. I mean, that was in between me being jealous of how big his beard is compared to mine. Oh, it's insane. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I was very jealous and envious when he, he came up <laughs> on the screen. I'm straight away. I'm just shriveling down like ah, I've lost, <laughs> oh, I've lost a lot of man points here. <laughs> it's, it's not good. I'm. I know you mentioned Japan, obviously, but I mean, when the world opens up, would you ever consider coming to the UK? You know, I was supposed to go to the UK with GCW. Right. Uh, and it sucks because I was really excited because I had had a lot of people speak pretty highly of the UK and. We we had the the whole the whole three days planned out, ready to go, and then everything shuts down. So well, shuts down, yeah, yeah. Oh, dude, I'd love to see you over here. You'd fit in perfectly. I mean, there's literally a promotion in every city. So I mean, you'd you'd <laughs> love it over here, dude. You'd get so much work. Um, before we start to wrap up as well, obviously Kevin Gill said I've got to mention Pokemon. Um, <laughs> I, I, I don't know much about Pokemon, but he said, speak to Warren about Pokemon. He loves Pokemon. So there we go. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do. I do. It, I literally spent most of, like, a lot of the time in Japan with my phone open on Pokemon. And I'd be like, hey, guys, I'll be right back. I'm going to sprint a few blocks over and get this Japanese exclusive Pokemon. <laughs> hold on. And they're like, are you kidding me? I'm like, yes, hold on. Seriously. And really? there, was, there, was, there was one that eluded me the whole time. And then finally... We're sitting in the airport at our at our gate, and it pops up, and I sprint across Narita <laughs> Airport to get this Pokemon to sprint back right as they start boarding the flight. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, guys, I, I'm never going to get another chance to get this. Hey, dude, needs must. You've got to do what you got to do, right? You know? Yeah. Priorities. That Pokemon needed to get <laughs> But, yeah, and that's another guy, Kevin. Kevin spoke so, so highly of you as well. That's another guy. He's like... Well, we're so excited to get you on because everyone we've spoken to has mentioned you has just spoke so highly of you, man. So it's been a pleasure to get you on. I, I've been wanting this for a long time. Um, but before I let you go, obviously, I know you're, you're, you've been at work, you need to rest, you know. But um, first of all, we'd love to get you back on because I think there's so yeah. much more to touch on, dude. Um, so I'd love to stay in touch and get you back on again in a few months. Absolutely. I yeah. mean, well, there are... I'm sure there's going to be enough stuff. There's many weekend stuff coming up. There's, you know, yeah. there, there, there'll be a lot of things to talk about at that point. That's it, dude. Well, I mean, I'll drop you a message maybe after Mania and we'll get you back on and we'll talk some more stuff. Yeah, ab- absolutely. I mean, I think uh, some of the stuff that I can't reveal yet, I'm really excited for Mania yeah. Weekend. This will be my first Mania Weekend. I've always sat it out because I, I don't like the, the stress and the struggle of doing yeah. that, but... There, there's enough stuff this time that I'm like, it's it's worth going. So I'm I'm gonna make the trek. I'm gonna do it. Hell yeah, dude. Well, I'll get you back on after Mania. We'll, I'll shoot you a message. We'll get you back on. Um, but before you go, let everyone know where they can find you. Social media, any merchandise. Uh, yeah, you can find me on all social media at or invite. Pretty streamlined stuff. Um, on Twitch at Rocky Mountain Pro. Um, if you have uh, Amazon Prime, you can subscribe for free. Um, 
You can also find on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts, uh, D and DDT. Uh, it's a, my Dungeons and Dragons wrestling themed uh, podcast that I do outside of wrestling. So awesome. those, those are the places you can find me. Excellent, dude. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure, man. Like I said, I wanted to make this happen because I'm a huge fan. So this has been a, a bucket list for me. Um, <laughs> so I really appreciate your time, dude. Um, but for now, the Wizard King, our advice. Thank you very much. Hey, thank you so much. It was built it was a blast. Thank you, man.